I'm glad to introduce to you Syrian Pharma and Ole Viborg, their yeah. CEO. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, happy to be here and uh, tell you a little about Syrian Pharma. Uh, and uh, the figure in the right corner down, that's uh, a curious investor that wants to find out why would I invest in this company. So Syrian Pharma, we're a drug uh, development and formulation company. We are uh, a spin-out of the University of Copenhagen, established in 2019. We have uh, 14 employees today, and we have state-of-art laboratories in Copenhagen, that way we can work with really highly toxic compounds, doing a lot of basic formulation work, so we can bring all the exciting new products to the place where they belong to the market, through the clinics. We have a strong patent position. We have so far uh, obtained investments of about 7.4 million, billion, uh, million euros, and most of all, we have established several very important commercial partnerships. One with Hovion in Portugal. Hovion is one of the major producers in the world of uh, spray drying products that we do. We have also Institute Pharma in Spain that will launch our first product in 2027. So we have come a, far, a long way in commercialization. In addition, we have partnerships with several major pharma companies. We have a very strong management team composed of myself, uh, the key inventor, Kabine Lippmann from Germany, Jakob Dünnes, a very experienced CFO, uh, have been involved also in some Swedish biotech companies, Wei Tian, uh, he's uh, in the CMC part, and Monica Gonzalez, finally, on regulatory affairs. Together, we can bring products from the early states to the market. So, what, what is it that we do? We have developed a platform called the Disposome Technology, and basically, it can be used to improve the solubility and bioavailability of small drug molecules for all intake. And there's a, actually a lot of activity in this market. More than 1,000 projects every year go from discovery into development. And most of these, they need something in order to improve the solubility of the compounds. That's where we work. And our technology makes solubility better. We improve solubility. Our bioavailability with higher drug loads, so we can have smaller, fewer tablets, and eventually we can also you know, reduce the toxic waste made in the side of manufacturing and at the side of uses of the drugs. It works like this. You take a crystalline drug, we combine it with a protein called beta lactoglobulin that we obtain from Arla Foods ingredients in very high quality and uh, purity. We have tested the technology here on more than 60 drugs. We make these disposomes, combining these two, uh, and the success rate is more than 75%, meaning that we can increase solubility five times, and we can also have a drug loading of minimum 50%. This is very, much, very good in industry terms. We have upscaled the technology, have the second GMP manufacturing in progress, and we have done more than 20 animal studies, and lately we have also published results from our first human study, that was a PK study uh, combined uh, where you compared the Institute Pharma product to the reference. I'll come back to that in a moment. What does it look like in real life? Here is a picture of a disposome on the left hand side where we have taken 50% drug, 50% protein, and as you can see here, it's completely soluble. If you compare it to the pure drug alone, this is not possible to get into solution, so this is what we can do. That's the difference, and it makes a huge difference when you take oral drugs. We have compared, of course, the technology to all the standard technologies out there. And in general, you can say, without going into any detail, that we are on par or better than what is out. So it doesn't mean that you will select our technology as the first choice. But if there's a need for something that's a little better, then we are on the radar. This is the study we've done on the first, uh, say, reference product, where we wanted to compare a disposition formulation and show that we could exactly match a pharmacokinetic profile of this drug that is called Caludeco. And this is the reference drug, uh, uh, say, uh, profile over 72 hours. And this is the first disposome formulation we tried to match with. And as you can see, it's actually a little better. Uh, and then the second one was completely spot on. So that's just in, it just shows that we can do uh, the products all the way to the market and uh, test them, prove them that they work in humans. We have several products uh, products internally. One of them is uh, uh, probably the most interesting here, where we have taken a, an existing cancer drug and reduced the dose to almost 25% of the original dose. So the product is abiraterone used for uh, prostate cancer, metastatic prostate uh, cancer. And 
some of you males will actually suffer from this. And when you come to suffer from it, you will have to take this drug and a lot of other drugs every day. You need to eat, eat four tablets, 1,000 milligram. What we can do here is we can reduce the four tablets to one tablet and having a dose of only 250 milligrams. We can also take away the food restriction on such a product. So there's a huge benefit for the patients at the end of the day. The graph on the right-hand side shows that we have actually made an improvement in bioavailability of 10 times the originator product. So it's a remarkable result. And when you look at the, the uh, left-hand side, you can see that's the new concept, going from four tablets to one tablet a day. So it's uh, definitely easing the burden on the patients. Our patent position is uh, we're focusing on two things. First of all, we want to protect our own technology. Second, we want to prevent competitors from entering the market. And we have actually managed to do both. So we have a very, a pa an umbrella patent uh, position where we can prevent the use of proteins with drugs in this uh, setup. And we also have, uh, say, a number of patents that protect our technology at different la uh, layers. So we have in total five patents, uh, patent families that are gradually uh, being issued in most of the countries in the world. The beauty about the technology that we have developed is that it can be used in many different uh, areas. Marketed drugs, where we improve they say, for example, the formulations, making f fewer tablets, we reduce the dose, e even safety. New drugs, a market that is increasing by $50 billion a year, we enable some of the new drugs to go to the market. We also have very good results in nutraceuticals. And finally, we have uh, in the nasal inhalation space also found a niece. And the latter two part, we have licensed out to our partner, Hovion, because they have, uh, especially in the nasal uh, inhalation field, they have very high competences to do this. So to make a long story very short, we have uh, today a portfolio of uh, partnered or not partnered products uh, where we actually have both applications in the neutral, uh, reformulation products and completely new drugs. And all these products, they are, they are say, targeting markets that are in the billion-dollar range. We will not get billion dollars in the first place, but we will get a significant portion of this. And we also have made money so far. We already have income from our work in the lab and from license fees. It's still at the low end, but it's gradually increasing. And we have ambitions to grow this to as much as 80 million euros uh, in um, 2030 increasing to about 200 million in 2035. So this is a real company where we are actually trying to make real money. So we are still there. Uh, we are still in, in the need for money. So we are out here to look, uh, to looking to raise 5 million euros. And this is going to drive the technology to the market, uh, finally. And we will have, as you can see on the right-hand side here, we will have the first product uh, launched uh, in 27. Uh, we will also have a number of, of new deals coming both this year and next year. Uh, and we want to use most of this, this uh, revenue for our own products, because the sooner we can invest in our own portfolio, the more value we will be able to generate in the long run. So that's what we are looking for today, and that's the conclusion. Why would you invest in, in Sion Pharma here? Um, we have a very strong IP protection. That's where you make the money. We have a really uh, dedicated management team. Proven technology, partnerships. We have a modest risk profile because there are so many products that we can uh, apply the technology to. We have already commercial success. We have partners that will, a partner that will launch the first product in 27. And uh, finally, we of course have a substantial upside in the company uh, valuation over the next few years. So that was about the word from me. But uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Ola, I have some questions for you. Oh. We'll start with a spicy one. Yes. Uh, how well known is the problem that you are actually uh, offering to solve? Poor drug solubility. Well, I can tell you that the, the, the most, two most recent webinars we had, there were 500 attendees on one of them, and 250 on the other one. So, uh, but actually, the reason I went into this business is because 
I was skeptical in the beginning because it's very rare that you have technology coming from the university that can be applied in downstream in the industry. That doesn't happen, basically. But I took this product now six years ago out and presented it at Bio in the US. And what happened was that actually a lot of the major pharma companies, they were interested in this. So we started out by making, at that time, a, an agreement with Novartis. So it was obvious that all the companies, all the pharma companies, they have this problem, they are looking to solve it. That doesn't mean they cannot solve it with existing technologies, but they are on the lookout for new technologies all the time. Mm. So you're saying that the right people are actually knowing about the, this problem, and they want you yes. to solve it. And, and, and now, I, th I, I appreciate all the, the, the two initial presentations we had. They are, they are new uh, drugs, they are addressing medical needs. We are addressing a need that is going completely across all the therapeutic areas. And now we are with the downstream part. We are, we are making drugs. We are formulating drugs. We are, we are doing things that you need to do in order to get these to work in patients and get the drugs to the market. That's a spicy answer, too. Um, how about uh, this? You told us in your presentation that um, you have you know, other um, competition, but you're just a little better if you ask for that. So could you give us an example about how does your competition look like? Well, the, the, the standard of art in this field is uh, using uh, what, you call, what, what, uh, what is synthetic polymers. So you make polymers from oil-based chemistry, and then you mix them with the drugs. You make all these amorphous solid dispersions. And they actually are quite good in increasing solubility and also stabilizing the drug. We are just better in most cases because it's a completely different mechanism. I'm not been into that. But we, we are using a, a different mechanism that is apparently just allowing that you can put more drug into the tablets and you can increase solubility and eventually the bioavailability more. And this is just what you want to, to have sometimes. So I can tell you, some of the major big pharma companies we have, had working, we have worked with, they have seen that our technology can improve the bioavailability by two to three times compared to the best alternative. Okay, what is the choice then? Do you want to use our technology or do you want to use something that's inferior? If you can, with our technology, extend the patent life, the, the choice is easy. So the barriers that we see are still out there are mainly based on the fact that you need to get this accepted by the authorities. So there needs to be formal approval of our technology together with the product. I, say, uh, I see we have a question in the audience, so if a hand make could slowly get uh, to its way up to you, sir. I will take another question from the sheet uh, as um, we wait for it. Um, do you work with an exit scenario or is it an ongoing business? Well, uh, well so far our intention has been to, to, uh, to uh, list this company because we think it's a very good uh, say, candidate for public listing because it's, it's not a very, very complex technology as such. So we are focusing on the commercialization. We are focusing on getting more and more products in, applying the technology in many areas, and also getting new technology in so we will actually become not only a leader in this field, but also in other fields that are related to formulation technology. Mm. Just because I was a little bit distracted, is that uh, yes, we are yes. having an ex exit ex 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 exit or is, uh, ex <laughs> exit is the public listing. That so, uh, so it's not a political uh, response, okay? <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Okay, we have a follow-up question from the audience. All right, so I have a question that might be, well, I don't know if it's a bad question, but since you can actually increase the bioavailability in this one. So I have two questions. First, could pharma companies integrate this without doing new trials for all of the existing drugs? Because if they could do that without too much effort, you're basically saying that they could put one third of their drug into the same pill and potentially radically increase their cost efficiency, how much they can make. In some cases, yes, they can do that. Not, not without complete... You cannot omit clinical trials at all, but you can do very, very limited clinical trials where you only compare the bioavailability part to another one. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have time for, if you make the other one really short. No, you're done. 
Yes, I'm done. Okay, fantastic. Then you will have, I'll uh, get the last question for you then. At what uh, valuation do you seek the five million? Oh, yes. Uh, that, I think w right now we're actually in the, in the process where we're defining the final offering. So the valuation has not been completely set. And it will also depend on how much success we can generate in the la next two to three months. And there will be some new deals coming out. So, so we, are, we are cautious not to sell it too cheap. Okay, thank you so much, Ole Wilborg. Yeah. So, thank you.